welcome um, students this is the second lecture on the sealed in metal arc welding so the continuation of the first lecture on the same topic and uh, i have explained uh, that uh, the welding process parameters like welding current welding uh, voltage and welding speed significantly affects the soundness of the weld joint which is uh, produced so by continuing the discussions related to um, the effect of the welding current and the selection of the electrode diameter i'll continue this lecture the selection of the welding current for uh, the different electrode diameters uh, is based on the application uh, normally for uh, the thick plates we uh, need uh, the higher heat input for uh, perfect melting and a proper penetration and uh, for uh, uh, that uh, the use of high welding current is to be done and for using high uh, welding current it is required that large diameter electrodes are uh, selected so that a higher heat uh, can be generated for a proper melting of the base metal and the electrode material so that joint can be completed properly in perfect manner in general therefore uh, for welding of thick plates the large diameter electrodes are selected to supply sufficient heat so that the base metal can be melted properly with the desired penetration and also a high deposition rate can be achieved because high heat input uh, generated uh, in the arc region not only uh, increases the rate of melting of the base metal but also increases the melting rate of the filler metal uh, which is coming from the electrode tip and the increased melting rate uh, uh, of the filler metal increases the rate by which uh, the groove is filled. So, uh, if we can say that higher welding speed increases the deposition rate, increases the penetration rate which is required uh, for welding of thick plates. The diameter of the electrodes uh, which are available commercially uh, uh, in a very wide range and this uh, this diameter of the electrodes can be in range of uh, 1 to 12.5 mm uh, in, in steps uh, uh, like 1.25 mm, 1.6 mm, 2 mm, 2.5 mm, 3.15 mm, 4 mm, 5 mm, 6.3 mm, 8 mm and 10 mm and then it can also be of 12.5 mm. So, the larger diameter of the electrodes are um, used for welding of thick plates, but when uh, the low heat input is required for welding of thin plates, we normally select the small diameter electrodes, so that desired heat input can be provided to the base metal and filler metal and a desired penetration can be achieved. So, on the basis of the electrode uh, uh, we set uh, the current which is to be used for a given application. For the different electrode diameters, we set different elect uh, welding currents. So, the details of uh, the welding currents which are set for the different uh, diameter elect, uh, of the electrodes, uh, the different uh, currents are set and that uh, detail we will see in the next slide. Uh, the, the relation between the electrode diameter and the current is like this here. Uh, the electrode uh, diameter in an mm is here is express, uh, mentioned in this uh, row here 2.2 uh, uh, mm 2.5 mm 3.18 mm 3.4.0 uh, 5.0 and 6 mm diameter electrodes these uh, can be of the different lengths and they require different level of currents the electrode of the 2 mm diameter can uh, be of length 250 to 300 mm and it requires the welding current range of 50 to 80 ampere 2.5 mm diameter electrode uh, can be of uh, 350 mm length and it needs uh, the current in range of 70 to 100 mm so greater the electrode diameter uh, longer is the length of the electrode here and uh, higher the welding current rating uh, which can uh, be used uh, with the electrode. So, as per needs uh, of the heat input required and the deposition rates which are required, we set the desired, uh, we select the desired electrode diameter 
and accordingly uh, the current welding current is set so as to get the desired heat input and proper melting of the base metal for perfect uh, joining of the plates to be welded. Uh, optimum welding current um, setting is important for successful welding because without that we will not get a smooth stable arc, we will not get consistency in heat input and the penetration. So, uh, the optimum heat input is important and uh, uh, if the welding current setting is not uh, optimum or not proper then uh, it can lead to the number of problems like high current setting may damage the electrode coating material due to the electrical resistance heating of the core wire. Because electrode extension length in uh, shielded metal arc welding is significantly high, so the flow of high current through the long uh, electrode extension portion generates a uh, lot of heat which uh, can uh, damage to the uh, coating material and the decomposition of the coating material degrades the performance of the coated electrodes. So, it is always desirable to maintain the temperature of the core wire within the safe limits, so that coatings are not damaged by the heating of the core wire caused by electrical resistance heating. And uh, on the other hand, if the lower currents, uh, if the current is set uh, on the lower side than the optimum level then it can create the problem of the arc stability, arc may be unstable and it may wander here and there and uh, it, uh, the penetration may be poor, it can lead to the lack of fusion or lack of penetration and the fluidity of the molten metal may also be poor. So, these things uh, will lead to the inconsistent weld in, uh, and the weld of the poor mechanical strength and poor weld bead appearance. So, the setting of the welding current on the higher side uh, or on the lower side uh, will be undesirable that is why setting of the welding current at optimum level is important. Uh, during the welding by using the proper current setting uh, the, the weld beads are deposited to fill uh, the gap between the plates to be uh, welded and uh, these uh, weld beads are uh, deposited in the two different ways. One, uh, uh, one method or one uh, way is that uh, in which uh, the weld bead uh, is deposited in a straight line that is termed as a stranger bead and in another case weld bead is uh, deposited in zigzag manner uh, we call it uh, as a weaver bead. So, the two types of the beads are usually deposited in welding. These are uh, the stranger bead metal is in which metal is deposited in a straight line and the weaver bead in which metal is deposited in different paths during the welding. It may be zigzag manner, irregular manner or curved manner. Schematically it has been shown here that uh, the, the zigzag manner or irregular manner beads can be deposited like this or like this. If when metal uh, or the weld bead is deposited in this way in these two patterns or some other irregular patterns we call it as a weaver bead otherwise when weld bead is deposited along a straight line we term it as a stranger bead. Uh, for uh, perfect uh, deposition or for proper deposition of the weld beads uh, it is necessary that uh, the current of the proper polarity, proper magnitude is selected uh, so that uh, the joint is uh, produced uh, free from, uh, joint is produced in such a way that it is free from the defects. So, the selection of the welding current for producing the optimum weight is very important and uh, uh, when selecting the current certain points are kept in mind like uh, the melt through problem can take place if, it, if uh, uh, the welding current is not set properly. So, for the cases where less heat input is required for welding of sheet metal or for welding of thin plates normally DC E and uh, e is, uh, is selected for the better uh, uh, weld joint uh, which is free from the defects like melt through and uh, the distortion and the residual stresses. So, the DCE and uh, will help to produce the weld joint 
and minimize the melt through problems compared to the AC or DC EP uh, polarity. Here uh, if uh, for the welding purpose we have to use long cables then uh, use of the long cables uh, uh, causes the loading of uh, loading on the welding power source because long length of the welding cable in both AC and DC uh, is known to cause the voltage drop and which uh, in turn overloads the power source. This uh, overloading is to be avoided and uh, if uh, it is compulsory to use the long cables like in uh, fabrication of uh, the heavy uh, uh, components used in uh, ship industry. So, under those conditions if it is necessary to use long cables, normally long cables are preferred with the AC welding uh, because it does not cause that much overloading on the welding power source. So, if AC, uh, so AC is preferred in case uh, of a very long length of the cables are uh, to be used for welding uh, of the components in, in the ship building or in the ship industry. Uh, and the, the arc blow is the another problem which is uh, noticed in case of DC welding particularly uh, when the plates are welded near the edges or the angle of the electrode is not uh, proper then under those conditions uh, um, and during the DC welding uh, the arc uh, tends to wander away from the in, uh, away from its intended direction or uh, it tends to uh, deflect away or in the directions where it is not required. So, that deflection of the arc from the path which is required is known as arc blow and uh, this uh, problem is uh, encountered uh, during the uh, DC welding particularly. So, this problem uh, can be overcome by using the AC. So, if the problem of the arc blow is significant then use of AC can help to overcome the problem of the arc blow. And if uh, the odd position welding is to be done like uh, the welding is required or welding is to be done in overhead uh, position or in vertical positions, then there will be tendency of the molten metal to fall down and that under those conditions it is required um, uh, that uh, the, the heat input to the uh, weld metal or the weld pool is uh, uh, is controlled properly uh, and uh, for better control over the uh, heat input and uh, over the better control over the weld pool it is uh, uh, preferred to use DC uh, as compared to the AC because DC allows to have better control over the heat input in the waste metal side or in the electrode side by selecting the proper polarity because uh, uh, heat input in a in case of AC is equal in both electrode and the base metal side. At the same time the application of the DC in odd position welding also helps to uh, get uh, the better arc stability and uh, the lower uh, heat input by selecting the DC EP. So, the base metal uh, heat generated in the base metal side is reduced. So, uh, the DC allows the better control over the heat input and better control over the weld pool uh, helps to uh, uh, weld uh, successfully in odd position uh, in odd positions. Uh, low current if is required uh, like uh, the DC welding makes the AC striking uh, makes the arc striking and its maintenance easier compared to the AC and the welding uh, uh, especially when the low current is used with the electro small electro diameters. If uh, for a given application if you have to use the small diameter electrodes um, uh, for, uh, for controlling the heat input because a small diameter electrodes can work with the low uh, welding currents and uh, the low welding currents, uh, but uh, the problem with the low welding currents. Uh, can be of the poor arc stability and its maintenance. So, uh, under such conditions if AC is used then it will impose the problem of the arc poor arc stability with the low welding current even 
in, in case when a small diameter electrodes are used. So, to overcome the problem uh, of the arc stability DC is uh, preferred over the AC uh, particularly when uh, the low welding currents are to be used with the uh, small diameter electrodes. The polarity selection this advantage is available with the DC only as per needs we can generate higher heat uh, in the base metal side or the lower heat uh, in the base metal side. Uh, as per needs uh, the polarity can be selected and that uh, polarity selection advantage is available only with the DC not with the AC. So, DC offers the advantage of the polarity selection like DC EN or DC EP which helps in controlling the melting rate, penetration rate and the mm, welding speed. So, as per needs uh, these parameters can be uh, controlled by selecting the proper polarity. So, that uh, the polarity selection advantage is available with the AC only or uh, sorry DC only. The DC EN results in more heat at the workpiece side and uh, which in result which uh, in turn results in higher melting rate and the welding speed with the shallow penetration. Because uh, uh, in case of DC EN uh, one third of heat is uh, heat of the arc is generated in the electrode side and two third of the heat is generated in the base metal side. So, this uh, huge difference in uh, the heat generation in the base metal side uh, produces the advantage of the higher melting rate of the base metal and the higher welding, welding speed with the shallow penetration. Uh, this DC E and particularly uh, in, in TIG welding also helps to reduce the life of uh, uh, helps to increase the life of the tungsten electrode, but here in, in sealed metal arc welding it, uh, the advantage is mainly related with the increased melting rate of the base metal. DCEN is generally used for welding of the all types of the steels except when low hydrogen uh, ferritic steel electrodes are used. So, generally DCEN is normally used in uh, steel welding. The non ferrous welding for the non ferrous welding normally we use a DCEP uh, because it offers the advantage of the cleaning action. Um, because when DCEP is used electrode is made uh, positive and the work piece is made uh, uh, negative and uh, uh, electrons are emitted uh, by the work piece itself which uh, helps to uh, get the advantage of the cleaning action particularly in the welding of the aluminum and magnesium kind of metals where cleaning action is important uh, because uh, refractory oxide films is uh, formed on, on the surface of the aluminum or stainless steel or the magnesium materials. So, that so, so far the welding of the non ferrous metals particularly DCEP is used and also it is used with the low hydrogen electrodes as it offers the advantage of the deeper penetration in the weldment. The AC welding current gives the penetration and the electrode melting rate somewhat in between of that offered by TCE and, and uh, DCEP. So, uh, because polarity is continuously changing in AC, so whatever uh, the, the melting rate and the penetration is obtained in, in case of AC that is found in between of the DCE and, and DCEP. Uh, the polarity significantly affects the weld bead uh, geometry here with the DC EN when the less heat is generated in the electrode side and more heat is generated in the base metal side we get the wider uh, weld bead with the shallow penetration and uh, when DC EP is used the electrode is made positive uh, we get uh, the deeper uh, penetration and shallower weld bead uh, or uh, uh, the weld bead width is a smaller one and uh, the, the, the penetration depth is more and in case of AC it is the combination of the both we get the optimum weld bead um, width and uh, optimum uh, penetration. So, uh, as far as weld bead geometry in terms of uh, the, 
the bead width and penetration is concerned, uh, the penetration and bead width lies somewhere in between of DCEP and DCEN. Uh, in, in the shielded metal arc welding, uh, the, seal, uh, the coated electrodes are uh, uh, used and these coated uh, electrodes, uh, 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 these coated electrodes help to produce uh, the sound weld joints. Coatings in these electrodes are used for uh, specific purposes uh, and uh, uh, those uh, the functions. Uh, uh, are performed by uh, these coating materials in very specific manner. So, what is the role of the coating in the sealed metal arc uh, electrode and um, uh, the, what are the different functions performed by the coating constituents or the coating materials that we will see in detail one by one. Uh, because uh, during the welding uh, of the metals, uh, the oxygen and nitrogen can Mm, enter into uh, the arc zone or in, into the weld pool which can uh, uh, get dissolved and react with, with the molten uh, metal of the weld pool and uh, the entry of the oxygen and the nitrogen in the arc uh, zone from the atmosphere and then into the weld pool uh, can uh, damage uh, the soundness of the weldment because these uh, oxygen and nitrogen can uh, lead to the formation of the oxides or nitrides or these can also be, uh, be present there as a, as a dissolved uh, uh, as a uh, gaseous medium which can uh, produce uh, the gaseous defects in the weldments. So, to uh, reduce the adverse effects related to the entry of the gases like oxygen and nitrogen coming from the atmosphere into the weld pool. Uh, it is uh, uh, desired that the effects of these gases in the weldment is reduced and, uh, the, uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, the adverse effects on the performance of uh, the weldment uh, caused by the oxygen and nitrogen or uh, hydrogen uh, are reduced by application of the suitable coatings uh, on the electrode. Uh, the actual method of uh, arc shielding from the atmosphere, atmospheric uh, nitrogen and oxygen uh, depends um, on, on the uh, different uh, types of the electrode uh, materials which are used means the, uh, to control the uh, adverse effect of the oxygen and uh, nitrogen uh, on the well meant. Uh, the different uh, methods uh, uh, or the different constituents in the electrode coating material can be used and uh, these uh, uh, coating materials are of a different kind and um, these will be discussed one by one in, in the coming slides. Uh, like uh, the, the coating materials uh, uh, can be uh, of the different types, the common coating materials which are used for um, uh, coating the electrodes uh, in the shielded metal uh, electrodes which are used in shielded metal arc welding process are like rutile uh, electrodes or a rutile type of the coatings are used cellulosic coating, basic coating, acidic coatings are, are used in uh, electrode materials and uh, the bulk of the coating materials is, uh, is converted into the gas. Uh, which uh, by, by the heat of the arc and uh, the small amount of uh, these coating materials is used to produce the slag. Whatever coating material is present that uh, works in the two ways. One is, is it gets decomposed uh, into uh, uh, the inactive or the shielding gases to provide the desired uh, shielding to the weld pool and the arc during the welding to protect the same from the atmospheric gases and a part of the coating material is also used in formation of the slag by reacting with the impurities. Uh, like in case of cellulosic uh, electrodes, the protection depends largely on the gaseous shield to prevent uh, the adverse effects related to the atmospheric gases. 
So, the cellulosic electrodes largely uh, provides the, uh, the, uh, the inert or shielding gases uh, to protect uh, the weld pool from the atmospheric contamination. While in case of rutile and basic coated electrodes, most of the material uh, of the coating is used to form the slag and only a small volume of uh, the uh, coating material is used to produce the shielding gases. Um, which are generated in form of uh, the inactive or the inert gases. The different uh, functions are performed by uh, the coating materials um, to uh, produce the sound joint and these functions uh, uh, range from the better arc stability to the uh, better control over the um, uh, protection of uh, or better protection of the weld pool. Uh, during the welding. So, these uh, functions will be covered one by one like uh, uh, the improve, uh, improve the arc ignition and stabilization of the arc. Uh, coating materials are frequently added with the elements like calcium and potassium which helps to strike the arc easily and uh, also help in uh, maintaining the arc because these elements help to release the electrons easily during uh, in the arc and uh, the presence of arc helps to um, uh, maintain uh, the arc easily. Uh, the another role which is performed by these coating materials is the formation of the slag. Uh, the coating uh, materials uh, um, acts as I have just told you that uh, it performs the two function, it, uh, it releases, uh, it, it, it performs in two ways, one is it releases the shielding gases um, uh, by the effect of the heat of the arc and uh, it, uh, it forms, it reacts with the, the impurities present in the molten weld pool to form the slag and the formation of slag in turn uh, acts in different ways. So, the one is the, when slag is uh, formed, it, it becomes uh, of the lower density than the base metal. That is why it floats on the surface of the weld pool and it takes longer time to solidify. Weld metal solidifies fast and that is why it uh, normally covers uh, the slag which is formed covers the solidified weld pool and, and, and therefore, uh, the slag which is formed protects uh, uh, the droplets during the transfer and the molten weld pool from the atmospheric contamination. Uh, the when droplets are being transferred from the electrode tip at that, at that time also uh, a thin slag layer uh, covers the molten uh, metal droplet and uh, when uh, it is transferred to the weld pool at that time also the, the molten slag layer floats over the surface of the molten weld pool. So, uh, thereby it protects the uh, weld pool from the atmospheric gases and uh, further the, it also protects the solidified hot metal from the atmospheric gases because it forms continuous layer over the solidified metal. It also uh, retards the cooling rate of the weld bead which is uh, deposited because it is of uh, the non-conducting in, in nature and uh, thereby it uh, decreases the rate of heat transfer to the atmospheric gases from the weld bead and uh, therefore, it uh, allows uh, the lower cooling rate or it makes sure that uh, the weld bead uh, cools slowly uh, after the welding. Uh, other functions of uh, the coating materials are like the formation of the shielding gases to protect the molten metal. I have just explained in detail about this. The coating uh, materials also um, provided with the deoxidizing elements like silicon and manganese um, in the coating material um, uh, helps to deoxidize uh, uh, the weld pool uh, during the solidification because if any oxygen is present in the weld pool that oxygen reacts with the silicon or manganese. So, the silicon and uh, manganese um, uh, thereby uh, goes along with the slag and oxygen is uh, removed. So, the presence of deoxidizers helps to uh, remove the oxygen from the weld pool. Uh, 
uh, alloying elements also can be added uh, with the coating material to get uh, uh, the certain alloying elements added in the weld pool for achieving the specific properties. Like uh, many times to increase the corrosion resistance chromium, nickel or uh, to increase the uh, hardness uh, the molybdenum or carbon can be added to improve the weld metal properties. So, in order to achieve the specific properties, um, the uh, uh, certain alloying elements can be added through the coating uh, materials uh, in the weld pool uh, to, to uh, get the desired results. Uh, sometimes to increase the deposition rate also, iron powder is mixed with the coating materials. So, uh, that uh, presence of the iron powder with the coating material helps to increase the deposition rate and uh, that in turn helps to increase the uh, deposition efficiency uh, and during the welding. Uh, different constituents are added in the coating materials to perform a specific functions and these coating materials are of the different types like uh, the electrode coatings can have the cellulose, calcium fluoride, calcium carbonate, titanium dioxide, clay, talc, iron oxide, asbestos, potassium and sodium silicate, iron powder, ferromanganese, uh, powdered alloys and silica. Uh, each constituent is supposed to perform a specific function or more than one function. Uh, these uh, steel electrodes uh, are classified in a specific manner so that uh, one can understand the kind of electrode which is there and uh, what uh, kind of uh, properties it will be offering after the weld bead is deposited. So, as per the Indian standards, the two standards uh, uh, shall be covering. One standard on the electrode um, classification was given in 1974 and another classification was given in 1991. So, first of all I will take up the electrode classification according to the IES Indian standard given in 1974. Uh, based on uh, the electrode coating constituents uh, structurally steels can be uh, classified in a different ways and how this classification is made we will see now. Uh, the coating uh, the, the different types of the coatings which are uh, there are the cellulosic coating, uh, rutile type of coating, acid, acidic coating and the basic uh, coating electrodes. Uh, uh, the in details the cellulosic coating electrodes uh, consist uh, uh, cellulo cellulosic material about uh, 30 percent and uh, the titanium dioxide or titania uh, up to 20 percent. And these are all position electrodes or means cellulosic electrodes are all position electrodes and produce deep penetration because of extra heat generated uh, during the burning of the cellulosic material. However, uh, uh, high spatter losses are produced by the cellulosic electrodes. Rutile electrodes are the another important uh, types of the electrodes. Um, it consists the rutile or titania up to 45 percent and the silicon dioxide around 20 percent and these electrodes are widely used for general purpose and therefore, these are also termed as the general purpose electrodes and the different percentage of the titania in, in, in the flux can be uh, there and which in turn results in the different characteristics to form slag and accordingly they are used for the different purposes. So, the difference in the percentage of the titania leads to the different performance of uh, the rutile electrode, uh, uh, rutile electrodes and uh, accordingly these are used for the different purposes such as uh, for the deep roof welding, vertical up and overhead position welding and butt and fillet uh, uh, welding. Acidic electrodes are another important kind of the electrodes, it consists the iron oxide more than 20 percent and sometimes iron oxide can be more than uh, can be up to 40 percent and other constituents may be there as a titanium dioxide up to 10 percent and calcium carbonate up to 10 percent. And uh, with such, uh, uh, such electrodes produce self detachable slag, this is important uh, aspects because many times it becomes difficult to detach the slag from the coating 
uh, or from the weld bead and if the slag is not detached properly the uh, uh, undetached slag can be left there as an inclusion which can deteriorate or degrade the mechanical properties of the weldment. So, that is why if the slag is self detachable it, it, it will help to um, uh, produce the weld joint um, uh, easily and uh, at the same time these electrodes also produce the smooth uh, uh, weld bead and uh, which is uh, n uh, and uh, these are normally used in flat position welding. Basic electrodes consist calcium carbonate around 40 percent and uh, uh, the calcium fluoride 15 to 20 percent and uh, these electrodes uh, need uh, baking before uh, uh, using because these are hygroscopic in nature these are just moisture from the atmosphere therefore proper baking uh, as per the manufacturer's instructions is important and normally this baking is carried out uh, at a temperature of 250 degree centigrade for 1 to 2 hours and these electrodes produced high quality weld bead deposits uh, which are having great resistance to the cracking uh, particularly hydrogen induced cracking resistance is good in the weld bead produced by the basic electrodes because hydrogen is removed from the weld bead by the action of the fluorine which is present in, um, in, in form of uh, the calcium fluoride. Uh, the calcium fluoride generates fluorine on, on dissociation from the heat of the arc and it combines with the hydrogen uh, present in the arc environment to form HF which goes to the atmosphere. So, the hydrogen is taken care of by this uh, the calcium fluoride which is present in, in the amount of 15 to 20 percent and thereby reduced percentage of the hydrogen environment helps to control the hydrogen induced cracking. The different coating constraints and the uh, specific functions performed by uh, them can be seen here from this table that the, there, there, uh, there is one main function and some other functions are also perf performed by uh, the each constituent like cellulose acts as a gas former for protection of uh, uh, the weld pool at the same time it also helps to coating strength and the reduce uh, as a coat um, as a reducing agent. The calcium fluoride um, uh, acts as a slag basicity and melt fluidity under the hydrogen uh, removal and it also acts as a slag former. Uh, the clay or aluminum silicate acts as a slag former and also increases the coating strength. Uh, the talc or magnesium silicate acts as a slag former and arc stabilizer, uh, rutile or titanium dioxide acts as arc stabilizer slag former and improves fluidity and uh, it also helps to uh, uh, remove the slag and the improves the weld bead appearance. Iron oxide improves the fluidity and acts as a slag former and uh, it helps to uh, stabilize the arc acts as a arc stabilizer and improved metal transfer. Uh, other constituents like uh, the calcium carbonate acts as a gas former and arc stabilizer other functions are slag basicity and slag formers asbestos is there for improved coating strength and also acts as a slag former quartz is there to uh, improve slag fluidity and acts as a slag former it also increases the, uh, the current current capacity of the electrode Prote sodium silicate and potassium silicates are used as a binder and these also helps to improve the arc stability because these are these are having the low energy potential elements at the same time these silicates also acts as a slag former. Uh, other uh, constituents which are added in the coating materials like FEMN and FESI acts as a deoxidizer iron powders have used to increase the deposition rate and the powders. Uh, powdered alloys are used to add the specific alloying elements in the weld metal to achieve uh, the desired characteristics. A structural steel classification as per the Indian standard is uh, like this, the, this standard is the Indian standard IS1815 uh, uh, was given in 1974 and uh, as per uh, uh, this standard. Uh, this standard uses um, uh, the letters and digits both to classify the steel electrodes 
and uh, these uh, there, there, there are uh, the 6 numbers or digits and uh, 2 letters. The first letter is, is uh, and the last is the letter and uh, the other uh, 6 digits are used to, uh, uh, to uh, for complete classification of the steel electrodes. The first letter P is a prefix, uh, it can uh, be either E or R which indicates that uh, uh, the, the solid extruded electrode or uh, is for solid extruded electrodes E letter is used and for reinforced extruded electrodes R letter is used in place of P, it is uh, P indicates prefix, it can be either E or R according to the way by which it has been manufactured. And the first digit this one indicates uh, the type of the coating which has been used. The second digit indicates the welding position in which electrode can be used the second digit. And the third digit uh, indicates the welding current conditions uh, which are to be used and uh, uh, for that particular electrode. Fourth and fifth digit indicates the ultimate tensile strength and yield strength of all weld metal specimen. And the sixth digit indicates the requirement of the minimum percentage elongation and energy absorbed in which are P V notch impact test of the weld metal. So, uh, it indicates the, the toughness and the percentage elongation of the weld ment. And the last letter which is suffix S uh, can be either P, H, J, K uh, uh, or L. P is used for deep penetration electrodes, H is used for the hydrogen controlled electrodes, J, K and L uh, you, according to the amount of the metal recovery in case of the iron powder electrodes. So, the different K, J, uh, J K and L letters can be used and uh, suffix is the optional one it may be used or may not be used in a given electrode specification. Another electrode uh, steel electrode classification was uh, given in 1991 and it is IS 814-1991. According to this classification uh, or as per this IS 814 electrode uh, classification, uh, it also uses the letters and digits, but the uh, letters uh, are there as E L and then 4 digits and the last is again letter. So, the 4 digits and the 3 letters are used in this uh, classification. E indicates the extruded solid electrode, L is used to designate the type of coating. The first digit indicates the ultimate tensile strength and yield strength of the deposited weld metal and the second digit gives the percentage elongation and impact values of the weld metal deposited. And the third digit gives the welding conditions in which electrode can be used and the fourth digit gives the current conditions for which uh, uh, gives the current conditions for use of the electrode. And the suffix uh, S or the last letter is uh, uh, optional and uh, indicates the special characteristics of the electrodes such as H1, H2, H3 as per the uh, which indicates the hydrogen uh, controlled electrodes for the different amount of uh, the diffusible hydrogen. Depending upon the kind of uh, the hydrogen percentage that will be permissible with the different electrodes that is um, indicated in terms of the H1, H2 or H3. So, um, so, as per the hydrogen controlled possible with the uh, with the particular kind of electrodes, these are uh, indicated by H1, H2 or H3. The other letters like J, K and L uh, can be used to indicate the different amount of the metal recovery in weld pool in case of the iron powder electrodes and X letter can be used uh, to show the radiographic weld quality. The weld bead geometry which is produced uh, by uh, depositing the weld metal uh, is characterized uh, by using the number of parameters and these parameters are particularly weld bead width, the height of the reinforcement and the depth of penetration. 
uh, the width uh, of uh, the weld or weld uh, bead width is indicated by this w and uh, the distance from this point to this point indicates the weld bead width and the height uh, which is above the base metal level height of the weld bead above uh, the base metal level is uh, uh, described as height of reinforcement. So, height of the weld bead above the uh, base metal level is this one. So, here this distance is uh, uh, termed as uh, the height of the reinforcement or a reinforcement and the depth up to which base metal is melted during the welding from the surface is termed as depth of penetration and these three uh, parameters are normally used to characterize the weld bead geometry. Uh, during the uh, welding uh, by shielded metal arc welding process, uh, the consumable electrode is used and electrode melts continuously during the welding to uh, fill the groove uh, between the plates to be welded. And uh, when molten metal melts at the tip of the electrode, it gets transferred gradually one by one. And uh, how this transfer takes place, what are the different forces acting? Uh, uh, in the arc zone and uh, which affects the, the way by which metal transfer can take place that will be uh, discussed here in metal transfer. Uh, the way by which metal transfer takes place in the sealed in metal arc welding process and the different modes related to the uh, metal transfer in the sealed in metal arc welding process. Metal transfer refers to the transfer of the molten metal droplets from the electrode tip to the weld pool in consumable arc welding process. And it has been found that surface tension of the molten metal at the tip of the electrode appreciably affects the mode of metal transfer. Uh, uh, normally surface tension is the force that uh, hinders the detachment of the droplet. If the surface tension is high, the transfer of the uh, molten metal droplet hanging at the tip of the electrode is hindered because it, it tends to uh, get uh, remain attached to be the tip of the electrode. So, if the surface tension is uh, high uh, the transfer becomes difficult and uh, the ball tends to uh, grow continuously until unless other forces dominate and uh, force the molten metal droplet to get transferred from the tip of the electrode to the weld pool. So, the surface tension of the molten metal at the electrode tip plays significant role in, in, in its transfer to the weld pool. Uh, the presence of uh, the impurities and the foreign elements uh, uh, in, in, the, um, in the molten metal droplet uh, plays a significant role in, in the surface tension in affecting its surface tension. Uh, the, the, the temperature of the molten metal and the presence of impurities these these two things significantly affect the surface tension force if the impurities and the foreign elements are present in the molten metal these will lower the surface tension forces and will facilitate the transfer easily the low surface tension facilitates the easy detachment of the molten metal droplet from the tip of the electrode and therefore the type and amount of the coating material with the electrode appreciably affects the molten metal transfer. If the coating materials are uh, in, if in the coating material certain elements are present which uh, makes uh, uh, the molten metal duplet uh, of uh, uh, greater impurity and uh, the more foreign elements are present in the molten metal duplet then they will lower the surface tension and uh, that will facilitate and the easy transfer of the molten metal. So, other aspects related to the molten metal transfer we will see in next slide. The different forces which act in the arc region and which affect the transfer of the molten metal uh, from the electrode tip are like metal vapors which are generated uh, due to the evaporation of the molten metal in the, in the weld pool because of high temperature. So, a molten uh, uh, the, um, the metal vapors will be moving upward direction and will be hindering the detachment of uh, the droplet and uh, the gravity is another force because uh, gravitational force will always be uh, acting on, on the molten metal droplet which is hanging at the tip of the electrode. So, gravitational force will uh, 
um, will help to detach uh, the droplet from the electrode tip in, in normal uh, positions, but in uh, upward positions it uh, in, in overhead welding conditions um, the gravitational force hinders the detachment of uh, the droplet from the electrode tip. Electromagnetic pinch force is another major force which uh, uh, affects the metal transfer because uh, it, it helps to pinch the molten metal droplet at the tip of electrode and helps in detachment or helps in de its detachment easily. Surface tension is another uh, force which affects the metal uh, transfer appreciably this is what I have just discussed. So, the gravitational force electrode pinch force and surface tension force are the main forces that affect the mode of the metal transfer. The pinch force helps to detach uh, the molten metal droplet from the electrode tip and thereby uh, facilitates its transfer from the electrode tip to the weld pole. Okay. Uh, we can see schematically how metal transfer takes place and how droplet is formed at the tip of the electrode. Say this is uh, the covering and this is the core wire, core wire will be melting and uh, the droplet uh, uh, will be hanging at the tip of the electrode and uh, here say this is the weld pool. So, the different forces will be acting on, on the droplet hanging at the tip of the electrode like gravitational force will be acting in downward direction and the pinch force will be acting tangentially uh, on, on, the, uh, on the electrode uh, uh, on the molten metal droplet and will be tend will be tending to uh, reduce the cross section of uh, uh, the droplet uh, near the electrode tip and thereby will be helping to detach the droplet from the electrode tip. Surface tension force will also be um, uh, acting uh, against the detachment of the droplet. Uh, higher the surface tension force greater will be the tendency of the droplet to remain attached with the electrode tip. So, these are um, this is how the different forces will be acting on uh, the molten metal droplet. Uh, these are the, the, the three uh, main types of the metal transfers which are uh, noticed in soft circuit metal transfer when the electrode is very close to the weld pool droplet is formed and it touches to uh, the weld pool and by surface tension force of the weld pool it gets transferred. This type of transfer is known as soft circuiting transfer. In globular transfer when uh, the distance between the electrode tip and the work piece is more, the droplet is formed at the tip of the electrode, it grows gradually and then by the gravitational force it is detached after some time, but before detachment it is able to uh, take the larger size. And in a spray transfer when a pinch force is significantly high uh, your um, uh, or if the impurities present in the molten metal uh, are, are high. Um, and then uh, the reduced surface tension and increased pinch force can lead to the detachment of the small droplets and uh, these droplets will be running along the axis of the electrode to produce the spray kind of transfer. The acidic and oxide uh, type uh, uh, electrodes produce the molten metal at the electrode tip containing the large quantities of oxygen and hydrogen which in turn uh, lowers the surface tension. So, in these two types of the electrodes uh, the oxygen and, and hydrogen contents are more in the molten metal uh, hanging at the tip of the electrode which in turn lowers the surface tension and thereby helps to produce the spray kind of transfer because uh, uh, lower surface tension droplets are not able to take the larger size. Rutile electrodes containing the large amount of TiO2 uh, the, uh, therefore, the molten metal is not much uh, oxidized and therefore, surface tension of the molten metal is not much reduced. Hence, this type of uh, the electrodes produced more globular and uh, less spray transfer. The basic electrodes contain the powder of deoxidizers therefore, moisture is removed completely, completely from the molten metal. Uh, or uh, the hydrogen content is also reduced from the weld metal sig uh, significantly. Therefore, reduced traces of uh, hydrogen and oxygen from the molten metal um, uh, results in high surface tension of uh, the molten metal hanging at the tip of the electrode and therefore, in case of the basic electrodes metal transfer uh, 
uh, takes place by the soft circuiting mod where molten metal drop detach uh, drop touches the weld pool and by surface tension effect it is transferred to the weld pool. High surface tension of the molten metal resists the detachment of the duplet and thereby increase the size of, size of the duplet at the tip of the electrode before it gets detached from the electrode under the gravitational uh, force and electromagnetic pinch force. And uh, conventionally it is understood uh, that the drops of 1 to 3 mm diameter are transferred at the speed of uh, 10 to uh, 30 uh, 10 to 20 uh, centimeter per second. So, uh, this uh, was the second lecture uh, on the shielded metal arc welding process and uh, now I will summarize uh, the lecture on the shielded metal arc welding process as a whole. We have seen that the, what are the different power sources to be used uh, with the shielded metal arc welding process and uh, what is the importance of uh, the welding parameter selection what are the different uh, electrode coating materials um, used uh, in, in the sealed in metal arc welding processes uh, and uh, uh, process electrodes and uh, what are the different functions performed by the coating materials, how the molten metal is transferred during uh, the welding from the electrode tip to uh, the weld pool and understanding on all these uh, aspects will help to uh, increase uh, the better utilization of uh, the sealant metal arc welding process as a whole to produce uh, the sound weld joint. Thank you. Thank you.